country. Is it on? Yeah. Wait, you didn't count us down though. Can you count us down? Oh, hello. Hey everybody, welcome to the Toddcast Podcast. I'm your host, Todd Basinger. With me as always is Todd Basinger and Todd Basinger. Hello. <laughs> Just kidding, it's Jake McDowell, everybody. We have a guest. Hello. Yay. A guest on the show. Hooray. How, how'd the show go tonight, gents? <laughs> well, your answer is going to be different than ours. <laughs> I feel like. Why is that? Well, just the, it was a the confrontational show. way that you ask the question, maybe. <laughs> yeah, they might have something to do with it. I had fun. I had fun. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> stupid show, anyway. I don't really care. The only person that liked my set is still here, so that's great. Keisha, Keisha's a trooper, man. Comes to every set. Yeah. I'm like my girlfriend. <laughs> Keisha is our lighthouse. We just so don't sugar. Sure. <laughs> Ryan, how come you get a mic stand? I'm special. That's fair. Nice. <laughs> He's the host. Sort of. Even though Todd's the host, but Todd's never on the actual podcast. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's like five minute cameos, like throws cards against humanity cards. Cards against humanity cards, cards, against humanity cards at us. And just kind of chills. I like that segment of the podcast. Where Todd throws cards at Todd like just randomly appears. After the while. Yeah, distracts us. Tom's our, our gambit. That was, a, that, was a, that was an interesting crowd. Well, they were all, like, here for one specific person. That's true. So it made it, like, it was a pretty, like... <laughs> I, I don't like to be that guy who's like, oh, it's the crowd, man. It's like, what, what's wrong with the crowd? Sometimes it's the crowd, man. But it was Sometimes, the crowd. Like, I mean, I'm trying all new shit. I still have to... I still have to figure yeah, out... Yeah, those are Tom's friends, so they're cool. I, I still have to figure out what to do with my eyes when I'm on stage. Like this, <laughs> Please explain. Okay, so normally when I'm on stage, I'm elevated uh -huh. over the crowd. So I can kind of just gaze out into the nothingness, like because I'm above everybody's head. But when I'm on like the ground level, everyone's on my level, so I like have to look them in the eyes, and that makes me very uncomfortable. So then I'm like looking at the ground, which makes me seem not confident. But I can't like look at the ceiling, so then I look like I'm. You know what I mean? It's just I, it's a weird dynamic, and it shouldn't give me that much trouble, but for some reason it kind of does. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. This table that we're sitting at, uh -huh. that's your stage next time. <laughs> so you just that's not a bad idea. Dead Poet Society? You, you may just have to kneel, I don't know, but you, you will be above their level, and then it's not as awkward. Like, swear. standing on a table would be less awkward than having to look people in the eyes. No, I would like it Probably, more, honestly. I would like it more if you didn't kneel, so your head's just in the rafters. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just a headless man doing comedy <laughs> making gestures. <laughs> that, would, that would make me much more happy. <laughs> look at somebody's ear? Look at Keisha Grummet with the practical <laughs> answers. <laughs> When are you going to start doing stand-up comedy? Because you're better than all of us. I know, I just got great suggestions. This is an open mic, anybody can do it. I've been waiting to see you for a really long time again, since you're Amish Joe, to tell you the truth, actually. Oh man, I forgot about that joke. Nobody else liked it except you, so I threw it away. Okay, so the Gone Girl joke is, uh, it's a great joke. Like yeah, it, it, so, all right, so have you seen the movie Gone Girl? Uh, everybody normally says, yeah, woo, and they all start cheering, right? And then I'm like, well, if you like that movie, look out for the prequel that's coming out this summer uh, called You Go Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that joke? But here's the thing, if I ask a crowd if they've ever seen Gone Girl and they just give me blank stares, even if there's one person like you who says, yeah, I have seen that movie, I can't do the joke because they won't get it. No. I think you still could. You think so? I guess 
Gone Girl gone is enough and, of a premise to Gone and You up. Go is, yeah. yeah. I've never seen the movie, and I'd like to check. So. Yeah, but you're pretty smart. There you go. <laughs> All right. Keisha's got tags, too. God <laughs> oh, damn it. You're showing me up right now, Keisha. But no, there was, back back to the looking at the ears thing, there was a kid in our high school who, uh, <laughs> We would all collectively, uh, as a table, when he would get up from the lunch table and go to get seconds or something, we would all say, okay, everybody just stare at, his name is Vito, everyone just stare at Vito's forehead, and like while you're having a conversation to him. Uh -huh. And so he would come back, and all of us would be like, hey man, how's it going? <laughs> and he would get super self-conscious, and just Jesus, really anxious. this kid. But none of us would address it. We would all just play it off, and every single person would just be like, he knew what was happening, but at the same time, he would s know what was happening, and then slowly think that he was the one who was just, like, freaking out. You are playing my game for them. Yeah. What I loved about your story is uh, you sounded kind of like, like a Russian foreign exchange student, because you're like, when we have conversations to him, I was like, all right, you kind of get the grasp of English, but there's something just... <laughs> We have yeah. <laughs> we have speaking of ears, speaking of ears, do you ever have you ever met and or dated? It's usually if you date someone because you don't typically, are, you're not typically around their friends when they're cleaning out their ears. But do you ever? <laughs> Are you ever like around somebody who cleans out the ear and it's like complete like brown shit inside there with like Q-tips and stuff? Uh, you ever, you like me to it? myself, but I've never witnessed somebody do that. You've never witnessed someone that's just like major earwax? No. So my girlfriend it really fascinates me. It's like every single time it's just like the grossest shit in the world. I bet if she just did that every day, that would stop happening. Probably. Or she's some like science freak of nature and she should be capitalizing off of this never ending what earwax. Is earwax. Like, where does it come from? From your head? <laughs> from your ears? <laughs> is it ears just like. Idiot? Is it the same concept as like yeah. mucus? Does it just like coagulate in your ear? I don't know. I, I really don't know. I clean out. These are the hard hitting <laughs> questions that you'll hear on the Zodcast yeah. podcast. We gotta research this. So yeah, I, I didn't notice the Russian thing, but I did a thing tonight, and I'll do it every once in a while. I was starting to tell you this, where I'll do, I'll say a phrase like John Mulaney, uh, and because my voice is already kind of there. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's got a similar cadence, and like it's kind of nasally, but the. <laughs> Okay, every once in a while, I'll say well like him. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> or with uh, tonight, it was, uh, all right, proceed, which is <laughs> a lot. And I did it, and I was like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> I did. That's John Mulaney's thing. I do, you ever, do, that. do you ever do that on accident or like unintentionally? Like, like you write a joke, and then you sort of look back on it, and you're like, yeah, that's kind of of the ilk of fill in the blank. All the time. That's why I don't like watching stand-up, yeah, because right. like, I don't want to be just like a, a knockoff Hannibal Burris or whoever I like at that moment, you yeah. know? I've so I just don't watch it. I, I actually didn't watch any of your sets tonight. So, I would so. love to see I you do a Hannibal Burris. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, love I can't. I mean, yeah, you I, say I, Gone Girl, <laughs> <laughs> and you say, no, I haven't, but you should watch the prequel. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll do you know what would be cool? A comedy show where Sing you just... Man. Bye! Great set tonight. See you, Chris. Say goodbye to the people. Hi, people. Right. Love you, Chris. Back to me. Uh, that would be a, an interesting idea for a show, though. Just do all of your jokes, a la whoever. You're like, I'm sure people have done that before. I brought that up to Ryan like a week ago, where we should, we should schedule a, a comedy show where everybody does one of the other comic sets. Oh. And like two weeks in advance, draw names so that you can prepare for I it. Could do, uh, I could do Jeff Styles. I'll just do Jake McDowell's set. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> oh, gosh.
But yeah, yeah I think that was really fun. Is fun. What are you alluding to? The fact that I wrote a joke on Facebook that sounded a lot like a joke you did tonight? Yeah, I might be alluding to that. I don't know. I've been drinking a little bit. <laughs> who, who would you, if you did your set as a famous person, who, who would it be? Uh, I don't know. I think, like, Stephen Wright would be fun to do. Yeah. I think it's a really fun to just, like, wear a crazy wig or whatever and just stand there and be like this. <laughs> and just, thanks. Yeah. How about you, Chris? Who, who would you do? Eddie Murphy. <laughs> I would love Oh, to my see God. That. I would fucking pay 20 bucks to see that. I paid 20 bucks right now. <laughs> <laughs> Come up here, Chris. Make 20 bucks real quick. Robert doesn't like mine. <laughs> he just wants to give somebody 20 bucks. <laughs> How about, oh, you, John Wayne? No, I would, I would want to do uh, either TJ Miller or, uh, or Steve Martin. Just for, just for like the theatrical version, like, portion of it. I feel like that would be a lot of fun. All right. Uh, Louis C.K. because I would force people to masturbate while I did it. Yeah, yeah but he never did it on stage. Like, Which one was that easy? I was really, I'm really... taking it up a notch. <laughs> All right, listen. I really, really want to put my pants down on stage. I want to do it as like... So I was talking to this guy at the Y, and he was like... And then just drop my pants. But like, so anyway, you know, and like... Eric Andre does that. Oh, he does it all the time. He yeah. pees on the front Yeah, row. the fact that he hasn't been caught up in like a Me Too scandal just amazes me. Well, he, it's, it's, he does it on stage, so no one could be like, he did that. He does it on his like, TV show okay. all the time. He showed, of, course, of course he did. He showed his dick to T.I. and T.I. fucking left. I did. <laughs> He's like, no, no. Who was, who was the girl that he like threw up on the table and then oh. ate it? Uh, Lauren something or other. She was like on the hills or something. And she just left. <laughs> she just yeah, walked he, off of the he show. Threw up on his desk and started slurping it up. And she's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> back and left. It's I, the best. I love his show. So, so I'm sorry to take away from the Eric Andre. I was oh, thinking sorry. about who I would like if I was doing a set as a famous person. Uh, I think for me it would probably be Tim Guitaro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was, uh, well, like, I I, I've never movie. seen your stand. I've seen a little bit of it. I thought it was pretty good. I just like I, I am a mono. I mean, like I'm not as funny as she is, but I'm a monotone male version of Tignataro. That's that's what I do. You know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> no molesting. <laughs> that's one of her jokes. That's a great look, hey, look. If you're watching this podcast and you've never seen Tignataro, take an hour. Just check it out. Come watch Tignataro, guys. Just, Stop watching the podcast, go yeah. watch Tick Guitar. Pause this, it's live, but pause it. <laughs> and then go watch Tick Guitar. Is this podcast just... Uh, it's just on Facebook Live. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then post it on YouTube afterwards. Oh, it is? Yeah. Bro. Yeah. How, many, how many hits do you guys have? Like, uh, I would minutes? say about four on a good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like while it's happening. But then people will watch it after. People watch it after. Well, nobody watches it. Not on YouTube, but on Facebook, people will watch it. So. Like, not a noteworthy amount of people. <laughs> More than the four that watched while it was happening. I'm struggling to remember a person's name, and it's really bothering me. Do you remember anybody's name, Levi? Dude, I, Not I swear to God, ever, like ever since I started doing stand-up, I can't remember anybody's name. It's like a weird brain thing. It's like my head's filled up with bits, and I just like I <laughs> you're just people. a wall bit. I you know, I just I meet people, and that information, my brain just goes like, that's not important, and just tosses <laughs> it out. I've gotten better only within stand, like remembering other stand-up comedians' names, which. Yeah. It, Normally in real life, I don't remember names. And half the time, but, like new people will come to the show, and they'll be like, "I'll I'll write their name down or whatever," because I'm introducing them. And then on the walk from reading their name off my notebook to to the mic, I'll forget their name. I'll be like, "Fuck." Yeah, that happens to me a lot. And that always happens whenever I'm hosting like. Uh, 
I, so I posted a few times at Penguin as I did once at the Diamond Joe. And every single time you do that, everybody that you bring up has this fucking laundry list of shit that they want yeah. you to say about them. Yeah. As seen on and I'm like, TV. <laughs> right. They're like, uh, he was on Bob and Tom. You guys know him. He was on Bob and Tom. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's always like fucking six things. I, there was a uh, hosted for this lady named Christine Stegman. And she was like, uh, she, she wanted me to say that she was one funny mother. Because she's a mom. And she's a comedian. And I was like... All right, uh, I'll say that. That was the one thing I was like, I can do this. I can do one funny mother. I still remember it six months later. Dante Powell is the name I was looking for. Dante Powell. He's going to be on our show in July. Uh, he had a great joke about Nick. Uh, Tick, Nick. He did a great joke about Tig Notaro. Remember that time? He's like, this is, this is just for the comedy fans. When I first heard Tig Notaro, I thought that was anime. <laughs> He's so funny. He was he was cracking Kyle Kanine up. Really? He was behind us, just fucking losing his shit, watching Dante. Yeah. Was what, what, uh, uh, Turbo? Yeah. Pink yeah. yeah. dick losers. <laughs> 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 He's great. Oh man. Pink dick losers. Just the amount of contempt he had for that crowd was perfect. Dante? Yeah. Yeah. So we were having a conversation earlier that we decided to stop to say for the podcast. About movies? No. You and Chris go down that fucking rabbit hole and I cannot keep up. <laughs> you just start naming off like obscure directors and you're like, oh yeah, I liked his movie. Uh, Chris, Chris is on another level for me. Like Dude, I'm you, telling you, you his, guys... his knowledge about movies and like the encyclopedia of movies that he has in his head is ridiculous. Well, because he was an agoraphobic for eight years. He had that a does time help. on his hands. <laughs> that does help. He, but, I'm telling you, you guys should start a podcast and just, there will be a, like, people out there. There's a demographic of like super movie nerds that would totally be into it. But we gotta compete with Doug Loves Movies. You gotta compete with the Todd Cast podcast, man. (laughs) But the, uh, (laughs) no, the conversation that we were having was uh, is doing stand-up comedy a mental disorder? (laughs) Absolutely. Because like, I think it's a benign mental disorder. Yeah, I not literally, obviously, but the Nobody gets up in front of people willingly and talks to them. Like, that's most like, people's number in, one fear. In society, yeah. Like, well, just in general, if somebody is like, hey, you gotta get up in front of a bunch of people and talk, they go, no, I'm not doing Dude, that. I'm still terrified of that. But regardless of that, you still get up and do it. The only reason I can do it is because I know I have, like, ammo. Like, I know I have bits. Well, when I go up and do, like, not like tonight where I'm just doing new shit, but, like, if I'm, like, this Friday I'm doing the, the nice little plug. This Friday I'm doing the uh, Let's Do This show in uh, Iowa City Bunch of- at the Blue Moose Tavern. And, uh, what time is it? Uh, 8 o'clock. I want to say, like, 8, yeah, 8 o'clock. Um, but it's, like, w- with a show like that, I know the shit that I'm coming with like works, so I'm not really afraid to go up there because I know sure. like I have stuff to talk about, but if I don't, like I am kind of terrified. Mm-hmm. Which I think hosting has helped me a lot in dealing with that fear because I a lot of times go up there and don't really know what I'm gonna say and then just kind of work through it, yeah. so. But yeah, it's still terrifying. <laughs> what I've always thought was weird about stand-up comedy for I'll, I'll, you know, I have a lot of friends who are really funny, and uh, on stage, they exude this confidence, and they make everybody laugh, and you're like, oh, shit, like, that dude is a funny guy, he's probably, like, great to get along with, uh-huh. and then you get them off stage, and they, and like, clam just... up, they won't fucking talk to anybody, and you're like, like, what were you just doing five minutes ago? Like, why can't you just have a normal fucking conversation with people, dude? Like, yeah. yeah. I, I can talk to comics, like I get along with comics really well, but regular people, I, I'm just lost. I have no idea what to talk about. Because it's so easy with comics. You have something in common, you can just be like, oh, you know, how well, long have you been doing it? Who do you like? Like, what, where do you perform before? Like, 
I just mean like, uh, yeah, and I, and I guess I have the same thing, but like, if I do a show and somebody comes up to me and says, oh, hey, you were really funny, like, I can have like a yeah, small 30 brief. second yeah, conversation, yeah. but these people be like, fix, and then just like turn away and be like, why are you so fucking weird, dude? Like, just, they want to talk to you, just talk to them. I'm not gonna fuck. <laughs> I, I, I throw some fun. people under the bus on the podcast podcast. I do hate I mean, I guess that. I could, because nobody's watching. Nobody's watching. No, no, <laughs> like, I hate compliments. I don't know how to respond to a compliment. Just just try, try this one, just say, hey, thanks. <laughs> 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 Just try it out, man. Hey, <laughs> you, leave you had a good set tonight, man. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it, if proven. if somebody comes up, if somebody comes up to me and like compliments me for whatever reason, it's it's like I don't know. If I accept it, that means that I'm agreeing with them on some level, which feels weird. And if I don't accept it, then I'm being a dick. Because I'm just going like, oh well, it wasn't that good. But like, I don't know. It's it's a weird experience to have somebody come up to you and go, hey, you did well, or that thing that you did was good, and then you have to somehow walk the line of. I'm making it way more complicated than it actually is. Yeah, really but are. but that's the shit that'll go on in my head when somebody comes up to me and gives me a compliment. It's just like I don't know what to say right now. I get compliments all the time. Every day. <laughs> Ryan, you suck. I look in the mirror and I'm just like, hey. Uh, you, you're, you're doing it, right? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta learn to savor the compliments because comedy's a fucking grind, man. There's so many days where you're just like, fuck, and, like, this is awful. And it, it helps to have those, like, things in your head where you're like, oh, I like... Donnie Townsend said I had a good set, like someone that you respect in comedy who gives you a compliment, or when you had a great set at a certain show, you can look back on it and be like, yeah, I remember I had that, and it just kind of helps you go through like the times that suck. For sure. Like, tonight, I got off stage, and I quit comedy. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it, it was such a weird thing, because like, I did, uh, like, I did a few like new jokes that like I've kind of been working on, you know. I was like, well, they don't really seem to like this. And I had I had written down like maybe do that right of shame joke that I fucking love. Yeah. Um, and like I did the first part of the joke and it was just like fucking deer in a headlight. I was like, and I tried not to like address the audience with stuff like that. I was like, usually just try to move on, but I was like, wait, nobody's never not laughed at that part ever. Like not one person was like. Oh, huh. That's like, that's funny. Like, yeah. you may continue. They're just like, no. <laughs> no, yeah. that's. Yeah, it's, it's, I just. So I, I like, hate to be right, that quick. guy that, like, the oh, fucking audience, but sometimes, man. Well, I just think, I was, <laughs> I texted my girlfriend, I was like, eh, I quit comedy, they don't think I'm funny. And then I was like, <laughs> well, maybe, and I remember, like, they were all here for Ben. I was like, maybe Ben Freeman's friends would like, like, my brand of comedy, you know? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, well, yeah, at Penguins on Friday and Saturday, I was terrified. Like, because that was my first club experience. Yeah, like, it could be a little intimidating, that place. And I was, but yeah. Said, wait. So he... I did a guest spot. He opened for Vinny, whatever the fuck, and... Vincent Pastore. What, like, these guys at the, the Diamond, Diamond Joe. So he did a spot at the Diamond Joe, yeah. opening, or hosting the show. And then they invited him to Penguins to do whatever you did nice. there. Yeah. It didn't go well, <laughs> but it but it, it was fine. It was it was cool to get up and do it. Um, yeah. But it, it was did just you get crowd. Um, Friday was better than Saturday. Saturday's crowd was a little bit weird. Um, Friday's crowd was like a really nice mix of demographics, so it was kind of cool. And then yeah. Saturday's crowd was just all the same people. And it was all like older farmer oh, type people, so worse. it was it it, it was a worse. It was kind of a weird night. But Friday Friday the crowd was actually really so cool. So did you stay overnight? No. So they made did they pay you at all? No. So you, <laughs> well, I wasn't. So you get to go. You get to drive an hour. No, it's like two hours for you, right? No, it's only like an hour and a half. 
That's fucking exposure, man. Yeah, I, I was happy to do it. I didn't really care. Exposure. But the but like also I wasn't supposed to be there. <laughs> like the guys who were doing the Diamond Joes invited me to and said, "Hey, you should come and do this." And That's pretty awesome. They didn't they didn't like remember that they said that, but I didn't really care. I was just like, "Okay, yeah, I'll do that. I'll take advantage <laughs> of the thing that you just said." And then I showed up and was like, "Hey, you guys said I should come by." And I'm like, "Okay." And so I I got on those two nights and yeah, it didn't go that great. One thing that I will say, which kind of made me a little bit embarrassed was uh, I did that thing. I don't know if you ever did this in high school, but when you get scared around a group of people, you like start to get really arrogant and cocky, like as a defense. I kind of did that a little bit. No, I just, I just sat there and didn't say anything in high school yeah. pretty much. Well, well, I mean, like, trying to hang out with... Because I was in sports and stuff, and Ooh. the cool kids were the, sport, <laughs> were the sports guys, and I wasn't a cool kid, but I did sports. So I would have to always hang out with the cool kids, but I wasn't one of them. So I would try, I would try to act like one of them, even though I wasn't one of them, as a defense so. mechanism. So it wasn't like... No, and that's that's what I should have done. But I, afterwards, I was like, I kind of was a dick. <laughs> like I kind of went, I kind of went into that, just like oh, and just kind of like yeah. So that that was a little bit of it. Of I was when I wasn't doing well, I didn't just go okay, and wasn't just my normal like stupid happy dog <laughs> self. Like I I got defensive about it. Which kind of, yeah, it was a good learning experience of like, okay, yeah, definitely. I won't do that again because that made it ten times worse than what it could have been. So how do you, Jake, how do you deal with bombing? Uh, what, what do you, what's your uh, tried and true method? I don't really, I, so I don't really have one. I think what helps for me and uh, Chris Lichting, if you're watching this, this is about you, buddy. Uh, Chris Lichting was like, you know, and this is like, never happens to Chris, but uh, he's like, you know, on the rare occasion that I do have a bad set, I like to just get up again as soon as possible, you know, and just like... Just uh, cleanse yourself. Of yeah, and just that. have that, like, yeah. you know, try to get back up and have a good set and just, you know, remind yourself mm -hmm. that you're fine. Because you're, like, here's the thing, like, even the best fucking comedians bomb, you know, and I mean, until you get to that, like, Louis C.K., Hannibal Burris level where you're, like, selling out auditoriums, mm -hmm. Even professional comedians fucking bomb. I, <laughs> Christine Seven, who she's a professional, not my favorite comedian, you know. She like came up to me the night I hosted for her. She's like, yeah, I just had the crowd just wasn't into it, and like it, it was almost like she was coming to me for advice, and I was like, I don't fucking know what you're talking about. <laughs> like you're the one getting paid. Like I, I drove an hour and a half to host for free, so yeah. you know. I, but I think just getting back up and you know maybe doing some older stuff and. Yeah. yeah, that's a good sign is when you get off, because that was definitely my feeling of like, it, it's it's a good sign when you get off stage after doing badly and go, I need to get back on stage right now. Like that's, that means that you're in a good, like, you'll probably be able to work it out. Yeah, just, you know, if, if you have a bad set, if you're doing new stuff and you have a bad set, figure out what didn't work scrub it up, you know, like, yeah. fucking, uh, that's a that's a technical comedian term, scrub it up. Is that? Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, just work on it. I think, you know, the hardest part for me, and I was talking to Todd about this earlier, is like, I love performing, I hate writing, because anytime I write, I'm like, oh, this is gonna suck. Like, I never know what's funny until I do it, you know, if it works or not, you know, so. I always know. <laughs> I did it like that. You know that joke about like how running over the school kids. You know, you remember that joke? Like I saw a sign that was like keep it's our pretty kids dark alive. joke for Jake McDowell. I didn't know. Hey, let's go kid, running over these kids. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great joke. You were, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was never gonna do that on stage. I, it was just like a funny thought I had in my head. I was like, but nobody's gonna like it. And then I, like the first time I did it, it worked really well. And I was like, eh, all right, I'll keep that. But. I didn't know that that was funny to other people, and mm -hmm. uh -huh. it, you know, because yeah. I'm very dumb. I don't. Yeah, I hate the writing process. Yeah. It's so 
tedious. Like writing something out word for word is I don't do that at all. Just gross. No. No. I uh I tried to do just like ideas, but then I would always forget like, you know. I have to write it out the first few times and just kind of see where I'm going. And well the, I can experiment maybe a little bit. Yeah. The joke that I did tonight about not taking care of yourself, I wrote that yesterday and today and I spent like total between the two days like four hours writing just that joke. Wow. And just like sitting down and figuring out the timing of it and like writing it like you would a song and just kind of trying to figure out, okay, like going through it line by line just because I don't do that and so uh, I wanted to try something different to see if it made it better mm-hmm. just a different process of trying to get it out to see if that helped after not doing well that weekend I was like okay I need to try something else but I I um yeah I, I would sit down and I would write a line and I would get go okay is there a way that I can make that flow better is that the proper amount of syllables to get to that punchline um mm. that's going to make it feel rhythmic in a way that makes them laugh are you taking notes right and <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what the hell i'm talking about it, it, it ended up working okay um but it, it was just a different way of doing it i hadn't really tried that before and it seemed to work it's like beating your head against the wall sitting there and trying to figure it out but for sure it it was a complete like bit that i had gotten done and it was like okay that seems like the entirety of the bit and now it's written and now i've performed it now i just have to clean it up hey can i ask you a question yeah can you do a christopher walken impression yes all right, let's hear it. Because you said okay, and I was like, wait a second. Okay. I, what is in line? I'll stab your face with a soldering knife. <laughs> First you take the chicken. How can we get to Christopher Walken and Brad? I don't care where you get it. You can buy it or find it or hunt it down with a knife. But you must treat your animal with respect. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you do you write out shit word for word and then I mean your jokes typically aren't super long. No. So I could see how that would work. The the weird thing is is like the the new joke I did tonight about uh like and it definitely needs some work and it needs a little bit of that scrubbing but like the quick coming on people guys like that joke, you know? Uh-huh. Like on the page, I was like, oh, this is so long. Like, because I wrote what I thought was a lot, and then, like, you get through it, and it's like 45 seconds to a minute, maybe. You know? Yeah. All right, maybe I should just write down some key points next time, you know? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do. I just write, I like, I write out. Todd Wilhite, you guys know Todd? Yeah. He writes word for word. I shook my head, yes, I don't know who that is. <laughs> you know, you'll be. I'm just like, yeah. I- I know. He's a very, uh, very grumpy troll. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's very funny, though, but he no, writes, yeah, like, great guy. He he writes like, word, word for word. Yeah, no, he, he's, uh, you know, it takes a while to open up. Yeah, yeah. But he, he'll write, like, you know, I've seen, like, his notebooks, and he writes literally exactly what he's going to say, and he'll, you know, just memorize it, but it works for him. Everybody does it a little differently, I think, you know, some people... Yeah. I don't know, some people, I guess, probably just write jokes in their head and they're like, oh, this is what I'm going to say, and then it just comes out, and well, I can't do that. I sort of do that, but not really. Yeah. Like, I'm, I don't know, I'm such a fly-by-the-seat-of-my-pants kind of way of doing things. Like, I'll just get up and improvise for a while, which isn't... <laughs> no, no. It's not good. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I mean, it, for you it might be, but for other people that's, like, the most terrifying thing. Oh. Uh, well, I feel like it gives me... I don't know. If I'm improvising, the I can do, like, a mental gymnastics of, oh, I was improvising, so it doesn't right. have to be good. Yeah. <laughs> like, because it wasn't, like, premeditated or anything. Yeah, it so of, it kind of justifies it in my own head of, like, well, I was improvising. That's kind of why I hate improv. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, it's I mean, definitely it's, it's definitely true. Like it is kind of a cop out. If it's good, done well, yeah. 
I mean, I'm not like you're, and not like if someone's going up and doing stand up and like improving lines here and there, but like actual improv troops mm-hmm. are kind of cringy. I just, I'm not into it. But yes, but good, <laughs> good improv. It's just a little, I just, I don't, I can't get into it. I'm sorry. I know there's people out there that are great at it, and... I, I agree. I love Reggie Watts. I love watching Reggie Watts, but just when you get more than one person involved, mm-hmm. I don't know why, it, it kind of freaks me out. It's like a culty vibe to it, where everyone's, like, just buying into the idea, and it's just, I don't know. I don't but like I will say, good stand-up is the best thing in the world. Yeah. Like, watching somebody do stand what did I say? I said stand up. I meant improv. Good improv is the greatest thing. Like it. Well, I disagree. Though. Watching somebody do a high wire act of and creating something that doesn't feel like improv yeah. is amazing. Yeah, I, I, I personally. Here's like another comedian who is like who's a stand up, but also does a lot of like improv. Like he he just writes jokes on the spot. Is Rory Scovel? I love yeah. Rory. I mean, he's. I, I watched him in Iowa City a month ago, and yeah, so it was just, Madison. It was phenomenal, man. Yeah, Todd. Want to give me a beer? He's yeah. he's one of my favorite. He's probably in my top five as far as like, jump off my favorite stand up comedians. Yeah, he's one of my favorite. Five minutes of fame. The guy is on your own podcast. podcast. He's just oh, ridiculously oh, funny. funny. Have you listened to the stuff that he did on Todd Glass's podcast? He's got a bunch of stuff on there that him and Todd Glass would do, and it's oh, the really? funniest just improving scenes, yeah. like radio scenes. It's. Do you know that Todd Glass is gay? I did. Is he really? Yeah. Huh. He likes penises. Huh. I saw well, the only the only nice reason I know him is from uh, the Tosh Point oh. <laughs> Todd He's Glass is awful prank show. Yeah. Oh, really? He would just torture like little children. Yeah. <laughs> No, he's he's hilarious. He's very like scattered and kind of unprepared, but yeah. uh, it works for him. Though. Yeah, no, it's hilarious. That's why I love stand up. <laughs> everyone, everyone has their own comedians that they like, and it's like there's something out there for everyone, pretty much. But I love watching From the most bizarre to the most structured. Like yeah. it's just you know. But yeah, no, Rory, Rory Scovel is. One of the funniest guys on the planet. Yeah, he's for sure. Just pound for pound, ridiculously funny. Yeah, I, I wish I, I like one of the things that I struggle with as a comedian is just confidence. I wish I had his confidence just to like <laughs> yeah, dude, go up there absolutely. and fucking know that a joke is gonna work. Keisha, who's your favorite comedian? Todd. <laughs> totally Todd. Don't lie. He's not <laughs> no, not local comedian. That was like, who, yeah, who, no, yeah. Who's your favorite real comedian? Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry. You know what? <laughs> wow. Man. It's Joe Coy. I always get. I always make fun of him. <laughs> so, um, before I answer that, back to your new hate improv. Um, <laughs> How? I don't do crowd work. I hate crowd work. How if you handle hecklers? I don't handle hecklers. I cry when I get off the stage. <laughs> it is true. It's pretty hard to watch. Yeah. I mean, watch comedians that have handled hecklers, which is why, although I did laugh at a lot of your sets, um, I typically don't laugh very loudly because I don't want anybody to get comic back up or they don't feel that their flow or their sync is off. So, I mean, unless I just find that's absolutely hilarious, you just won't hear that from me. But... But you're it, saying um, you did like my set. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get one more <laughs> Yes, don't... Tell me I'm funny. We need validation. Please. <laughs> don't make comedy. But having or being able to... I think it's, a, do crowd work or deal with it's important to have that in your skill set, definitely. Is all the, the whole heckler thing, though, I think is overstated. I think people yeah. look for hecklers. You know, here's the thing. I used to address every single heckler that anybody that ever said anything. I remember one lady was like trying to order. A, I was at a show and this lady was trying to order. Fuck food. you, bitch! <laughs> well, she was trying to order food, but she was like, she was in the front row and she was asking the server questions about the kind of pizza 
And uh, and I just like I, well, I was thrown off my train of thought, right? And I was like, I hope and I remember die. my friend Steve Jennings, a comedian from the Quad City, was like, uh, "Have you ever considered just not fucking addressing it?" Like he was like upset at me. He's like, "We'd like to hear your jokes. Quit talking to the hecklers." And I was like, "Yeah, all right, you know." Yeah. And so, like, you'll see these videos on YouTube where they're like, hecklers. Steven Hofstetter yeah. handles hecklers. Some of those guys, they look for it because, I don't know, they think that it makes them look cooler. And it's like, yeah, somehow, you, you just look like an asshole. Somehow they have 45 videos of them putting yeah. on hecklers. And it's like, at some point, you're planting somebody or you're yeah. encouraging it. And then yeah. you cut that part out and just like, oh, someone said something. Oh, your, mom's, <laughs> your mom sucks dick. <laughs> God. Classic. Yeah, classic. classic. Oh, the Bill, the Bill Burr uh, Philadelphia, the Philadelphia thing, thing is, pretty is one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Have you ever, have you ever seen that video? No, It's like not. 12 minutes Do you know who Bill Burr is? Yes, I do. <laughs> so he goes up on stage in Philadelphia and they're talking and, you know, he gets up there. Within like two minutes, he's just like, fuck this. And then he just goes into this, like, fuck you, Philadelphia, with your fucking Philly cheesesteaks. Fuck the Eagles. I hope just, somebody smashes a bottle yeah, of your sit-infested batch. I hope y'all get cancer and fucking die. And they're all booing him. And event, by the end of the set, he somehow, by just trashing the crowd the entire time, he they're somehow like, gets them to come back well, that's on that's how you get side. ahead in Philly, because they're all fucking assholes. <laughs> like, no, it's just... Are. That I, town... I don't know what it is about Philadelphia, but everyone is angry at nothing. Like, constantly. You got a nice town. Why are you so... It's not that bad of weather. Why are you so angry about it? It's <laughs> really bizarre. The Eagles just won the Super Bowl. Relax. Everything's going to be fine. Yeah, the look. Phillies? I don't know. What the, I don't watch like, baseball. Like, obviously, so. people are like, New Yorkers are rude and, like, running around. There's too but, many of them. That's the problem in New York. It's but everybody's just in a hurry in New York. In Philadelphia, it's like, I'm not in a hurry. I have nothing to do. <laughs> Let me spit in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean, what I never understood about is Philly is the heroin capital of the world. Like, it should yeah. be pretty fucking chill. That, you know? that doesn't surprise me. What metal heroin addicts do you know? What's that? Uh, uh, what uh, metal heroin addicts do you know? Boom. <laughs> oh. Heckler put down. <laughs> Just got him. Put that in the compilation. I don't really like no, I'm not on, but like, that that's the point of heroin, is, is it makes you mellow. Have you ever? <laughs> you heard that heroin? Yeah. I mean, yes, it's a present. You ever listen to Pink, yes. uh, Pink Floyd? <laughs> that's that's my understanding of heroin, pretty much. It's just like Pink Floyd songs. Just sick kind of guitar like, riffs. Sick guitar riffs, and you kind of just zone out. So, yeah. I mean, Keisha, you never answered the question, though. Okay, Who's your favorite so comedian? So, back to um, hecklers, <laughs> I would have to say... Jimmy Carr. Because of the way that he... <laughs> That's really funny. Christopher Titus. Yeah, Christopher Titus. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. I love how that was spoke I was reaction. not... Okay. I was not right. expecting that, but... What were you thinking? <laughs> What's that? Okay. You know what? Who? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know who I would have guessed for you. Brian Reagan, maybe. Brian Reagan. Reagan. He's my favorite. Is he? He's my I've favorite. I've literally never seen one bit. Dude, he's, he's really funny. He's like my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. He's my number one. Yeah. 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 Y
ruining the show. It's the problem when it, it's a, it becomes a problem when the heckler starts getting laughs. That's kind of <laughs> when shit turns. When all when it, or if it's like a small town Iowa place and it's like the heckler knows people and you know they're all kind of like, oh, this guy's fucking hilarious. It's Jimmy over here cracking jokes with the comedians and they're all. Like more, him on more involved with him than you know they are you, and you're just some fucking guy. And I don't know. I want to say this is the most comedy-based podcast that we've had so far. Yeah, I know. Usually when we start talking about like religion and the afterlife and Sasquatch and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it evolves. Yeah, religion quickly. and Sasquatch, like you do. You know. They're yeah, yeah, it usually goes to that Are you, place. Do you always stay for this also? Or Not always. It was because of me. Sometimes they suck, and she's like, fuck this. I'm out of here. I'm going to go get a hot dog. There's nothing redemptive. What? What's your bank account? Hot dogs? What's your bank account? Keisha, what do you do for a living? I've been wondering this, too. You, you, you said one time, and I'm trying to remember what you said. Just say the industry. I don't even know. I feel, okay, I don't can even I know the address of the place. I'm gonna guess. If I'm right, you have to tell me, okay? You're a librarian. How, how if I guess? If I guess right. If you're right, I have to tell you. But then you that I'm right. Guess. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm wrong, you just be like, you know, no, all right, I'll see wrong. you guys later. So I'm, you don't you're not a librarian. No, a librarian? That's racist, Jake. Do you work with Do you work with kids? No. No. Are you in a cop? Do you work at a college? No. No? Okay. Do you have a job? <laughs> Those are the only jobs I could think of, so. <laughs> are you? Four. You have four. four. I do. Do you drive for Uber? Never. Which makes sense. Clearly, it works. Lift kind of girl, I get it. No. Mm-hmm. Better profit margin. Longer rides. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's actually a working stand-up comedian. She's, <laughs> she's just, she's just, she just, she just, she just, she just, she just Mondays off. Cause, she, cause she's, she just shows on Mondays. She's just opening for Wanda Sykes on the weekends, and then she comes here. <laughs> she's later so laughing at how guys. fucking terrible we are. <laughs> how do you feel about Kathleen Madigan? I love Kathleen Madigan. Oh. Kathleen Madigan. Yeah. Um, Kathleen Madigan is Des Moines later. Really? Did you see that? No. She's my favorite uh, she's female really stand-up great. comic. This uh, by far, oh my god, it's hilarious. Super funny. Who's your favorite female stand-up comic? My favorite female? Um, Jen Kugel. No. <laughs> no, I, I love Jen <laughs> She's not my favorite. It's, uh, I don't know, either, I like Tig Mataro a lot, or uh, Janelle James. Yeah. I love, I love Janelle Jane. James, is, she, uh, she opened for Chris Rock while he was um, doing awesome. his Netflix. Special worked out, so um, she's got she's actually got a Netflix special that she just recorded and should be out pretty soon. But she is hilarious. She's from like Cham- the Champaign area, but she lives in New York now. Okay, yeah. definitely recommend checking her out. I love Maria Banford. I like her too. She's my favorite. I like Sarah Silverman. I, I, I actually like Sarah Silverman. Silverman. Silverman more now. Like I've always thought she was a pretty good comedian, but I, like. She, she just keeps going. I love her last She's gotten more focused. Yeah. It's very uh, reminiscent of a lot of the shit that I do. At least I, I feel like uh, a lot, like the way that she kind of approaches. So she was there's a lot of. Ryan Graham? Yeah, no, no, she's not. Uh, she's too Jewish. No. Uh, <laughs> she. I don't know, she, she has a lot of like twist jokes. You know, where it's like she leads you down a road and you think something's gonna happen and then she just flips it on it on your head, which is stuff that I, I, I never really set out to write stuff like that, but I don't know, it just kinda happens and then it works and then I keep doing it. So Yeah. Nobody is it's great. Did you say who your favorite was? Yeah, Maria Bansford. Yeah. You're not listening, that. Jake. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I like I like Sarah Silverman a lot. Um but yeah, she's definitely gotten her her stuff is more like uh, her stuff is just less scattered than it used to be. It's very like 
It's very cleaned up, which I think has made her a lot better. It's more, yeah, just focused. So I, uh, I should probably be going here, but I want to give just like one more piece of comedy that I've picked up from you know doing stand-up for a few years. Uh, the next time you do a set, try holding the mic like uh, Fred Durst and Limp Biscuit, just like <laughs> this. Um, and just see, like, just feel the laughs come, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just do it like this the whole time. They're like, wait, is he about to break out in song? I didn't know. <laughs> it took me, like, four months to figure out how to hold the mic, to be honest with you. I, I actually, like, I saw the way, like, Louis C.K. How about you? And then Donnie Townsend holds the mic the same way. And I was like, hey, I think that'll work for me. I'm just like... How's that? Down here. Down there. You just hold it down here and it's kind of like, it's a loose wrist. Uh -huh. Loose wrist. See, I think I, I watch myself and I feel like I, I feel like I mush my mouth a little bit too much. Almost like I'm hiding half my face. And I feel like that doesn't really, I don't know, maybe I should try it down here. I do like the Bill Burr thing of having the mic stand here, just having something to lean on and kind of fuck with while you're, you know, doing it. I just feel comfortable doing that. What I hate is when people are like, Oh, you, you fucking, oh, you think you're Bill Burr, you're holding the mic stand? Like, Bill Burr wasn't the first fucking person to ever put his hand on a mic stand. Yeah. Like, it's not his yeah, thing. Yeah. He doesn't own copyright to fucking left hand on a mic stand, you know? <laughs> or you can do the Marin and have one foot up on the, like, speaker wedge. I think just lean it there. Yeah. I've never seen him. <laughs> like, I, I, well, I, I saw, like, a little bit of a stand up, but I just, I wasn't. Was it for me? Yeah, I hate, I hate when that happens when like somebody. But I hear his podcast is great. Like, yeah, oh yeah, it is. It's brilliant. I hate when I hate when I like there's somebody that I was like oh like someone you should know about like Marin for instance right. is someone that I've had this problem where I get into their like I get into their special and I'm like 15 minutes in and I'm kind of just losing interest and then I turn it off and I'm like fuck I should just power through. I love like, they're not gonna think I'm a real comic if I haven't seen I know, Martin right? Marin special. Yeah. No, I, I just love how confessional it's his stand up is. It's, it's very much it's just very like raw, very just not like not not overly trying to be funny. It's just more I'm no. trying to be honest. Yeah, well funny. he he's just a raw nerve. And it's like it's like the raw the, nerve. I, I thought you said raw nerd. Fucking like, <laughs> <"Okay>, nerd. That's <laughs> uh, Brian posting. No, how did you describe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> how did you describe me tonight? Oh, uh, no, I said. What? What did I even oh, say? Because I was complaining, or I was saying uh, that I didn't do well tonight because I didn't wear my Hawaiian shirts. <laughs> One of my Hawaiian that? shirts, and you said something about. Oh, uh, uh, a Hawaiian. Yeah, a Hawaiian shirt is someone who's festively unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That's why it's for old people, I guess, right? Yeah, that's my Love that's it. my tag. You either have to be an old person, or you have to like never stop wearing sandals. Just be that, <laughs> just be that guy who goes to like Buffalo Wild Wings at noon and just starts fucking tossing them back and hitting on the waitresses and rocking shit. your those guys. Rocking your Birkenstocks and the sandals and long sleeves on your head. Like, oh yeah, no, or I'm a talking, visor. I'm, I'm talking like fifty year old, just yeah. gross, bloated, fat head. Well, the thing Red about you can be alcoholic. any size <laughs> that, that's a in Hawaiian shirt, a Hawaiian yeah. shirt. Like it doesn't matter how big or skinny you are, you can wear a Hawaiian shirt. It's like it's a barbecue all day type of guy. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for. <laughs> well, it doesn't have the tails, so you can't tuck it in. So it's like, yeah, I'm dressed up, but I don't have to tuck anything in, so I'm good. <laughs> like it's, yeah, it's it's the ultimate like. Yeah, just dad white trash. <laughs> that's the perfect barbecue attire. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for on stage. I don't know, I started wearing Hawaiian shirts, and then I I want to mix it up every once in a while just so I don't become the like, oh, he thinks, uh, he thinks if he wears Hawaiian shirts every, every show, then he's going to be funnier. Like, that's his, you know, stupid shtick that he does or whatever. No, you need to get a sun, like a sunburn. I need to have one. But you need to get burned while you're wearing yes. like yes. slim sunglasses. Yes. And then not wear the sunglasses, so you just have lines around your eyes. You just smell like cooked pork all the time. <laughs> 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 
We've got a vague smell of really like... Really greasy handshakes for people <laughs> just... Oh, sorry, I just ate some sausage. You got the salt and pepper doll up in your beard. <laughs> uh, no, I, I said... I saw um, James Draper at the Turnbuckle Comedy Festival, and I swear to God, I was dressed in the exact same clothes. <laughs> what, still, was he, what was he wearing? He was wearing a fishing shirt and a fishing hat. Oh, and yeah. I, yeah <laughs> the exact same fucking clothes that I had on. And it took me a while to like get him you know, cornered at the end of the <laughs> night. I was <laughs> like, you are what I'm going to look like in 20 years. <laughs> I feel like uh, Sam Talley was probably wearing something like that too. No, he was wearing like jeans that he literally oh, cut. Oh, come Yeah. And yeah, I shook his hand after the show. Like, I tried to get into the green room while the <laughs> shit was going on. I'm like, no, I'm a comic. They're like, no, good. No, you're not. And then. We, we had special wristbands. I, yeah, I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why is it that people like that, that have that clear, like, uh, homeless dad kind of look. They, it doesn't look like they haven't not worn shorts a day in their life, and their legs haven't like received the message that they're getting <laughs> sunlight. That's a good no, but that that show. So the entire show is trying to get into the green room because I hear, hear they have free beer and I want to talk to comics. So they have free La, La Croix also. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Shout out to La Croix. Sponsor me, please. And then, please uh, give us money. Sam Talent went up and absolutely killed it. Just Dude. one of the best sets I've ever seen. That, that was in my the best entire life. Yeah, that was yeah. Just... I've seen Bill Burr. I've seen Louis C.K. Like I've seen a lot of fucking people, and that was my the best. Hurt very bad. Yeah. Kyle um, Kinane was like sitting in the back. He's like, "Fuck, I gotta go." Yeah, we were talking guy. to him. Me and Tom were talking to him before the show. He's like, "Fuck, I gotta follow this guy." Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. But uh, after Kyle Kinane got off. Whoever was manning the little green room just disappeared. So I was like, "Fucking great!" And I just walked in the green yeah, room. Yeah, and I'm just like drinking beers and talking to fucking Louis <laughs> Stevens. And I'm like, "Man, I saw your show on Comedy Central. It was great." Uh, and he was uh, he's an interesting fellow. Louis is, Stevens. Did you so, talk to him at all? Yeah, a little bit. But I, dude, I was so starstruck when I was back there. Like, yeah. Uh, well, Sam Talbot came up to me. He's like, he's like, "Hey, what's up, Jake?" And I was like. Fuck, you remember my name? Like, I didn't talk to anybody for the rest of the time. I was like, that's enough for me. Like, fucking. Nick, I tried to talk to Nick Thune. He wasn't having it, dude. He, he didn't talk to. He talked to, like, Kyle Kinane and Brody and. He was uh, just not friendly. Uh, or I don't want to say. Kind of, like, in his own head about his set or something. Or yeah, what? I think he, um, he just did not. Or is he, he just, just wasn't interested in that? making friends, I guess. You know? Yeah. He was like, look, they paid me to be here. <laughs> Yeah. Like, so I'm here, you know? So he talked to, like, his friends that he knew, but... Yeah, I talked to, talked to Kyle twice. Talk, went up to Brody Stevens and talked about his uh, Comedy Central show, and he seemed very, like, uh, regretful of it, sort of. Really? Was like, I was like, dude, no, I loved it. Like, because his show on Comedy Central, for those who don't know, was uh, basically about his recovery from being, like, he, I mean, he's not recovering from being bipolar, but he's bipolar. Uh -huh. And there was a period there where he kind of went off the rails and stopped taking his meds, and he fucking, like, drop-kicked the police officer and shit. <laughs> and uh, what, he, he'd make all these weird videos of himself being like, I was in the hangover, I was in this, and, like, just yeah. all these, you know. That was what half of his set was about, like, he'd say that he yeah. was... Yeah. He's, he's really interesting to watch on stage, yeah. how aggressive he is. But uh, I, I was talking to him about it. I was like, no, that's because it was a really cool show just seeing him like go through that. And it was more of a drama than it was a comedy. Mm -hmm. And he, all he kept asking me was like, but did you think it was funny? <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, I thought, I thought it was funny. It was, it, was, it was cool, you know? And I was like, but I liked that it was kind of real and it was you know, really interesting and it was sort of a drama and whatever. And he's like, yeah, but... but yeah, I just I don't think I'm gonna do anything like that anymore. I think I'm just gonna stick to the funny. Okay, <laughs> okay man. <laughs> I was surprised like uh, 
you know, like, I had the interaction with Nick Thune, and I was like, all right, like, he doesn't want to talk to anybody. Uh, but then Cal Kinney was, like, the nicest guy, and, like, I was also, like, too starstruck to talk to him. I was just like, finally, I got up the nerve to just say, hey, man, thanks for coming and doing this festival with us. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. Like, he was, like, he said more than I thought that he would, because I'm like, oh, this is Cal Kinney, he doesn't want to. I was the complete opposite of that. Yeah. I was that guy. He was who went up and just fucking went for it. So like, he's not gonna remember me. He um, watched everybody's set. Yeah. Like that was what, what was crazy to me is like, like he might have gone to the green room, you know, three or four times the whole weekend to grab something to eat or yeah. something to drink. But uh, he was in the barn watching people's sets the entire time. Uh huh. Yeah, dude. We pulled up there and. Like got on that weird little trolley thing, yeah. And we're like standing there waiting in line. We're like, that was that Cal and I? Because I I I've only seen him on TV and stuff. I didn't realize how kind of short he was, yeah. and he's like kind of got like a gray beard thing going on now. Right. We're like, holy shit, that's fucking Cal and I. And like we're all getting on things. Like oh, I'll just wait for the next one. I don't know why he's Alex Jones in this story, <laughs> a globalist. Uh, but he. Uh, yeah, and then we, I don't know, I talked to him once when I was, I just saw him walking by and I was like, hey man, I saw, like I was there when he filmed his uh, Loose in Chicago special. Oh, really? And I sat next to his parents, basically. Nice. Because we were, I was there with this guy who used to do comedy here and then he moved to Chicago. And uh, we we were up on the second row and there was all these seats available that were like reserved, well, they were reserved, but no one was sitting in them. And we were like, hey, is it cool if we sit here? And this chick just turns and she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll ask Kyle's mom. And we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so then we like sit, sat there and then like talk to their parents afterwards. We're like, oh, you're, we think your son's great. And they're just like, <laughs> okay, whatever. And they get the fuck out of here. And uh, I was like, yeah, man, I, I saw, I met your parents. And he's like, oh, you mean Deb and Frank? Yeah. <laughs> and, they, and then uh, me and Todd went up to him and I tried to. Tried to relate to him. Did you run bits by him? It did. No, no, no. I just, I asked him, uh, "Do you feel like a hot girl at a bar at a place like this?" You know, because <laughs> like everyone's kind of looking at you and being like, "Oh no, I'm not looking." And like all the comics are just kind of like hovering around him, trying to get you know attention. And he was like, "Do I feel like a hot girl at the bar?" And then just kind of like didn't, wasn't into it. But we we talked for a little bit. I was like, you know, we're at, like. What part of Chicago are you from? Oh, I'm from Madison. No, oh, I'm from Brookfield. And he was like, "Oh, nice zoo." <laughs> and uh, I don't know what happened after that. He was kind of drunk, a little bit drunk towards the end of the day. Probably. But uh, yeah, it was a good time. Well, I think I'm gonna leave on that story, guys. And my awful cow can I story. Okay, before That's I go, I, I hate the way that you pronounce his last name. Kanane. Yeah, but you say Kanane. I don't know, it's supposed to be Kanane. 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 Well, before I knew how to pronounce it, I would always say the wrong, say it the wrong way. And yeah. then now I know how to pronounce it, and now I don't remember which is the right way to say it. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> There's two ways in my head, and I just kind of pick one and go with it. The tumor is not Kanane. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Jake okay. McBowles, everybody! Bye. Chalk McBowles! Alright, this is not fun anymore. <laughs> Bye! Bye! Todd, you want to get on this? Keisha? Uh, have a safe drive. Man, I got real tired all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm gonna go pee. Cool. Do it alone. Talk about. Talk about yeah. my dick. <laughs> Guys, oh. No. We have time with our first contribution of the night. <laughs> In the new Disney Channel original movie, Anna Montana struggles with a brain tumor for the first time. <laughs> and trust me when I say it won't be the last. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last song. Hello, Todd. <laughs> you got it? Nice. What's well, up? Not much. Yeah. Did you enjoy tonight? Did you have fun? Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Your tummy's been hurting lately. 
definitely. That uh, was sick, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just had some Chex Mix. Are you sure that you're not still sick? I don't know, you wanna find out? <laughs> oh, I was, gonna, I was gonna ask how I was gonna find out. No, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> or are you going to, like, give me your disease? I don't know, if you're lucky. That sounds fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I'm not. I'm not gonna, What's your favorite illness? My favorite illness, uh, lupus. Hell yeah! It's, it's a fun choice. word to say, lupus. It's lupus. It's lupus. 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 Lupus sounds like a character from Harry Potter. <laughs> lupus Dumbledore. <laughs> lupus. Is all just his brother. Lupus Grimly. <laughs> The youngest of the Grimly Twins. You are wizard lupus. That, that sentence that I just said didn't make it. I just said the youngest of the Grizzly Twins. What the, who, who, that doesn't make any sense. Who are the Grizzly Twins? The Grizzly Twins, I'm glad you asked. They're book number three of Harry Potter. They were a group of, uh, they were twin ghosts. And they haunted the Ravenclaw common room. You never, you didn't None hear about the Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. You didn't, oh, okay. No, I was <laughs> making it up. <laughs> I was like, you, you didn't hear much about Ravenclaw in the, in the movies. No, that's I, thought, I always thought it was like the, 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 the LD group. <laughs> then you get the starting out of the person's head and he's like, oh yeah, you're going to Ravenclaw. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna read something, like part of something to you once I find it. Uh, so I'll explain what it is while I try to find it. Um, so I think it was a group of college students, but they made a bot like a computer bot, and <laughs> it, it, it took in uh, I get all that. of the Harry Potter books, um, and then they created an algorithm that uh, turned those books, compressed all of that data, and tried to um, recreate it in the best possible way, like create a new story based off of the information that it had learned really? from the books. I was going like um, five minutes. How did we stray so far? Well, what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> so, do you want me to explain it all again? Well, he, I asked him what his favorite illness was. He said lupus, and he said lupus sounds like. A Harry Potter, Harry Potter yeah, like Lupus Dumbledore, who's like Albus's brother. I don't know anything about Lupus, but or else I would make a joke. What are the symptoms of Lupus? Yeah, um, you have Lupus. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't it like a skin yeah, thing or some shit? Okay. okay. Heard that. Sorry. Yes, please. Yeah. What is Lupus? She works in the healthcare field. Yeah, she does. What up? Can I give me that bank account information now? That, that was the I was either teacher or healthcare. Mm. Why would you be a teacher? Oh, you just you have, have a very teacher vibe. Like a warm mental, warm welcome presence. You look like you would come into a classroom and turn a chair around and like sit on it and lean on the back of the chair. <laughs> Let's rap, kids. Let's rap, kids. All right, I'm gonna lay it down to you, straight kids. <laughs> I don't want to be here any more than you do, but we're going to have a great school year. If you just respect me, I'll respect you, and we'll get along. <laughs> Highlights magazine your syllabus. <laughs> so no, uh, what this is, is uh, I think it was college students, but a group of college students made a computer bot that took in all of the Harry Potter books. And then they made an algorithm that churned all of those Harry Potter books and took all of the information and tried to follow patterns to recreate a new Harry Potter book based off of what it learned. The book is called uh, Harry Potter and the Portrait of What Looked Like a Large Pile of Ash. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter. Are you going to read the entire book? No, it's. Is this just they only posted a few pages of it. Uh, Chapter 13 The Handsome One. The castle grounds snarled with a wave of magically magnified wind. The sky outside was a great black ceiling, which was full of blood. The only sounds drifting from Hagrid's hut were the disdainful shrieks of his own furniture. Magic. <laughs> it was a thing that Harry Potter thought was very good. 
Leathery sheets of rain lashed at Harry's ghost as he walked across the grounds towards the castle. Ron was standing there, doing a kind of frenzied tap dance. He saw Harry and immediately began to eat Hermione's family. <laughs> Ron's Ron shirt was just as bad as Ron himself. <laughs> and then it goes on from there. But if any, if any of you read, listening want a great read, read Harry Potter and what looked like, and the portrait of what looked like a very large pile of ash. Coming to a school near you, and the Scholastic Book Club. If you get enough, uh, if you get enough points in your Scholastic book, uh, you'll be able to trade those points in for one free pizza at uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, so you can lie and say you read and just get free pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> and then you can get malaria from the ball pit. <laughs> or you can go to my house. And then I'll have to give me credit card number. Spend third grade <laughs> lying in your bed and not having any actual human interaction for a year. And the year that you should be developing the most as a human being. And then we need to have malaria control, that's what he's trying to say. And then you can never have a meaningful conversation with another human being in your life. You need to have malaria. Because of fucking Chuck E. Cheese. Malaria control in schools. That's what he's saying. I'm sorry, I got sad. <laughs> Y'all want to talk about school movies? <laughs> I'm like committing to this bit. <laughs> you know the only people watching are... Us and Keisha. Oh God. The show must go on. So us and Keisha. Keisha's rattling her keys. She's trying to. Yeah, no, she needs you get the fuck out of here. So Pizza gave me tape. That's a hate worm as well. So wait, are you a doctor then? No, my goodness, I would never. A. Social worker? No, that's the field I could never go into. I'd be too emotionally invested. Um, oh, so you don't work in the middle of the field. <laughs> well, it's not social work. Yeah, are you sure like a pharmaceutical? Yeah. Are you a pill pusher? Psychologist? Oh my gosh, no. I'm such a dislike. Banker. Dude, same. And then my parents. Gave me Pepto Bismol because they thought it would help with my stomach. Besides guns, that is the one thing that all the all the recent me lose an eye. all the recent uh, shooters. Are you serious? What? <laughs> no, you're not. What did you say? I only asked because my cousin had a childhood cancer when he was four, and he has a glass. Of <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, he's like, you made me break, Keisha. I was having so much fun. Regardless of whether anyone else was having fun, I was having a lot of fun. Now, I said my parents tried, tried to give me Pepto-Bismol to help with my stomach, but it just, like, made me lose an eye. My right one is glass. Not those kind of pills, like, psychiatric pills. Oh my gosh, those are horrible. The one thing that all the recent shooters have had in common, that fucking dude who shot up uh, uh, Las Vegas, the recent fucking guy at the school in Florida, besides owning guns, they were all on some sort of psychiatric medication, is what a Facebook meme told me, so, right there, <laughs> remember that. And then, but I so believe, I mean, there's, the there's so many she fucking people on, left me for Carl, what can you talk about, I just spit everywhere, that was gross. Her and Carl drove off of the bridge that night. Her dad always told her that dancing shouldn't be allowed in this town. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This podcast, oh, this podcast would get a little footloose. Maybe he was right. That's dirty dancing, I mean. Or maybe it's footloose. No, it's... There's not always a time to dance. He took that drowsy shit. I just talk like this the entire time of the party. Would that be better or worse? 
Yeah, I wonder about the thirty thousand feet. Okay, so now we have to figure this out. What? Like, why can't you tell us what you do for a living? You just don't feel comfortable, or you think we're gonna like, you don't, you think we're gonna show up or something? I will. You do? I would. Tom was asking me what is what is new child's thirty forty five. You said about twelve thirty. I'll blow it. So you still got about forty forty five minutes. Awesome. Tom was telling me he was asking me how he should decorate his. His new uh, baby's nursery skulls, and he showed me relax. and he showed me where he was gonna put the crib. What part of his trailer is that gonna be? <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at the schematic and I went, "Nobody puts baby in a corner." <laughs> Someone got to have Jerry Warbox eyes. <laughs> like, sorry, it was surgically put in. Like, they didn't just get to have them and hold them oh, like mushy like. Oh, love has two eyes. <laughs> Coming to a theater near you. Hi, <laughs> I'm John Mulaney. What's the name of the movie? Oh, it's, uh... New Line Cinema <laughs> presents... <laughs> Love at first sight. This time, <laughs> what, what? What is it? This time, love is spelled with two eyes. Coming to a theater near you. <laughs> no, but seriously. We need to have more guests on this podcast. Cause once the guests leave, it just devolves into nonsense talk. I was watching them, but. Hallway. I don't know what the hell he was doing. Who? There's smoke everywhere and <laughs> tongue. I think he was dancing. He might have been having a seizure. All right, I'm gonna get another beer. You want a beer, Tug? Sure. Keisha, you want a beer? Absolutely. Keisha, do more of the more of the moonshine kind of beer. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> She's fixed. Oh yeah, no, the moon was shining real bright when they went over that bridge. <laughs> Keisha can't drink because her job as a nurse's assistant no. won't allow it. I don't know. Drug dealer? Can you, will you tell us off camera? <laughs> Banker? No. That's why she won't give you a credit card. Right. All right. You could give me the information, I still wouldn't know what to do with it. She's an x-ray assistant. <laughs> x-ray assistant? <laughs> he'd, uh, he'd like try to buy yep. something on Amazon and he'd like write the wrong address or something and fuck it up. He wouldn't, he'd try and throw out three numbers on the back or something. Have you ever had a credit card? Yeah. And it didn't go well? No, I was 18. That <laughs> <laughs> did not go well. No, I maxed that shit out within like and then I painted it off and cut it up. What was your, so it was like a thousand dollar limit? No, it was like 300. I'm not gonna give oh, a, $300 I'm gonna give an 18 year old a thousand dollar limit. I have a four thousand dollar limit. Donald Trump had a small loan of a million dollars. Oh shit, I forgot a tag tonight. What's that? It was a Trump tag. Ah, I forgot it. Ah, uh, the the tag, it was stupid, but the tag was, uh, I, <laughs> it was supposed to be, um, it's really important that I get stuff checked out. But what if, what bad ever happened to somebody who didn't, who waited to the last minute to pay attention to something really, really important? So it's the guy who didn't vote. <laughs> it's a stupid tag, but I forgot to say it, and it made me upset. <laughs> You've been watching the Olympics? No. Me either. Uh, I don't believe in patriotism. <laughs> See how many people that upset. The no people that are watching. No, are don't, so upset. Don't crush my dreams. The 17,000 people that are watching right now all hate you. There you go. Yeah. They're uh, all skinheads. 
<laughs> now I've got tiki torches in the back. No, I've I've like practicing. I've watched a little <laughs> bit of it, but Something not like regularly. Yeah. You want? Fuck no, I don't want that. Uh, it has laryngitis. <laughs> oh fuck! I take that. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. Uh, but, no, I've been watching it. Why does everyone, I was talking to Michael about this, why does everyone uh, hate figure skating so much? It's mm. freaking awesome. Is it? Yeah. Like, it's know. the amount of talent that that takes and the amount of hard work that that takes is ridiculous. Indeed. 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 That's so much. It's just but nuanced to control just, what your body is doing. It's just not my cup of tea baggers. Yeah, you didn't hear that enough tonight, or what? No, you heard that enough tonight. I happen to be orphans here tonight. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna cry now. My parents are dead. It's okay. I killed them. I didn't even mean it like that. No, it's okay. <laughs> no, I hear orphan. I just automatically people fake people are making shit. Uh, I didn't <laughs> even mean it like that. But then after I said it, I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Now I'll show him. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. I hope you can't have two more parents so they both die again. I hope somebody adopts them and then they die. Hey. <laughs> Whatever, it's fun. Did you know that in China, men ages at 29 to 30, I want to say 6, are the most highly adaptable demographic in the country? What? If you want to switch continents, there's no. I could be adopted at 29 years old. You can. I'd probably be cheap because I'm a white baby. <laughs> <laughs> Charge those premium prices for the. Yeah, hell yeah. No, and I could make some money. No one wants a white baby. And I could make some money, probably. Not even white people, to be honest. Hmm. No, ew. Hey, <laughs> do you have any kids? No. Do you want one? I didn't say that. No. I said, do you want any? But he said it in a, but like, <laughs> in some type of way. Right, like you had a man waiting in a room. Do you want the kids? <laughs> no, nah, he, he's, no, he's not in the camera. He's just bashed right over um, there. It's quicker though, right? Just hit the nervous system. I do not. Do you have a boyfriend? You're with no kids. <laughs> Wait, what? Is he your boyfriend? Do you have a bank account number? Give me a <laughs> Give me those digits. I actually have several. Oh, several shit. bank accounts. He oh, should diversify. You got a family and sure it's up to $10,000 per account. Mm-hmm. Just put all your bags in one basket. You ever seen, Pre- 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 you ever seen that, uh, you ever seen that Chappelle show bit with uh, Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> the Wu-Tang Financial? <laughs> got to diversify your bonds. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's flushed down the toilet. Like. <laughs> it's a great bed. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, so that sort of explains why Keisha comes here every week. She's got she nothing can, else going on. Because she can afford it. Like. <laughs> wait, wait, did, do we figure out where she works? Or what? Just, I don't even care, like, don't even tell me the place. Just what field, what is your job title? <laughs> Wait, she's what? A, so you run a methadone clinic? She's a funeral director. No, she was the famous being a drug dealer. How you gonna say I'm trying to get off heroin by using that? What the crap? That's like saying I'm trying to quit well, cause that, smoking crack. Because heroin it's is awful, but that is freaking awesome. Yeah, your gun is so much fun. I love it. It's my, it's my Can't get enough of it. No, I see you fart into the mic. So wait, so you're not going to tell us who you are? It's not like we're going to show up there. I mean, you might 
I mean, I will. Keisha's the. Keisha's just very. She's very protective about her. Private. Yeah. Do you work for the government? That's probably it. Yeah. She's wired. <clears throat> She's tapped. Mm-hmm. She works for Trump. Yeah. <laughs> well, my my uncle works for the government. He can't tell us what he does. He's not. He's a mailman. No, <laughs> I'm the mailman. He's actually unemployed. He worked. No, he works for the CIA. <laughs> and he can't. He can't. We yeah, have. What do you do? Like all kinds of. Uh, yeah. That's why this. He probably him. watches traffic footage. You don't have that type of security clearance. Probably like fucking kills Pakistanis <laughs> with drones. Like specifically, because apparently we're still doing that for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> drone bombing. Have you ever flown a drone? It's pretty fun. <laughs> I Especially when you're, you're I in should Orlando. do that before I judge uh, yeah. the U.S. government for killing. Like the bombing is just countries. an after product, but like the genesis of it is drones are fun. <laughs> <laughs> That might so, be a bit. do you, okay, let's play 20 questions. Do you work with people? Yes. Okay. That doesn't really narrow it down. Are robots involved? Yes. Nice. Oh. <laughs> That's a breakthrough. Um. Do you build the robots? <laughs> <laughs> Is it a... Corporation or a small business? Corporation. Is it government funded or privately owned? Private. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> After every for corporation, how do you narrow down a corporation? Uh, As no. Yeah, I narrowed it down. <laughs> It's independently. Do you work at a desk? Yes. Okay. Big time. And it's. Do you have your own office? No. <laughs> uh, Chris just sent me a text message saying. So she works at Medline. No. <laughs> no. Keisha, Chris sent me a. Keisha sent me a message. Or Chris right. sent me a message saying Keisha is my C C I A shadow. <laughs> <laughs> So she works, at it, she works in an office, she doesn't work, she, no, she works at a desk, she doesn't have her own office. Are you a receptionist? No. Is it a cubicle? No. No? Okay. Kind of open, Do open you... plane situation does this office have? Do you work in an office? Yes. Oh. Are you answering phone calls at any point? At some point, I think. I mean, yeah, everyone does. Hey, you know what? Even <laughs> I do. I'm a mailman. <laughs> I, I answer phone calls. Right? I make phone calls when I get stuck in a fucking ditch, which has happened twice in the last two weeks. Um, should learn how to drive? People should learn how to fucking pave their goddamn driveways. It's three inches of solid ice. I go down there to deliver the package and then I try to get back up on the fucking road and it's I can't get anywhere. Next thing I know I'm sliding down into yeah, somebody's fucking yard. These mail suck ass. They and do. They're from the 70s. And then what happens? And then I just, I'm like, well, I can't get out. And then I call the office and then they call a the tow, tow truck and then they just pull me out. You get weird when you're tired, man. You get so fucking weird. I'm so tired. <laughs> um, so you work in an office. Um, do you handle anything like... Wait, how do I phrase this question? Do you... Do you yourself perform any medical practices? No. Okay. Do you... Does anyone you work with perform medical practices? No, it's more academia. <gasps> Are you a pharmacist? Academia. Wait, you said it's more academia. Are you a pharmacist? No. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> Do you work for McGraw Hill? No. Do you work for... 
The Torah. Academia, what does that mean? Like just speaking in riddles. Do you like academia nuts? Because I'm oh, so involved. <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever heard you say. <laughs> did you just say? Did you like academia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fucking brilliant. Um, uh, <laughs> y'all want to get some food? Do you sell products <laughs> at your business? Well, actually, yes. The business does. Yes. So it's a no, but actually yes. So what does that mean? <laughs> Is the product a tangible good? So it's more of an abstract, you sell knowledge. Huh? You sell. You sell information. Play kids. Do you work in the Matrix? <laughs> yeah, she said, so she, it's. I worked in the Matrix, and Keanu and I would be there. I'm pretty really? sure. Really? I'm pretty sure. Even with works. his expressionless face? <laughs> that is not true. Oh my gosh, he is a fantastic person. Yeah, no, that's, that's definitely true. He's a, he's a cool guy. He's, he seems like a really solid dude. Yes. It's just he can't act. <laughs> what? Have you seen John Wick? All right, we are not getting we are not getting sidetracked by movies right now. We need to figure out where the hell are you? Keanu Reeves' personal assistant. There's a bomb on the bus. Keisha. She's gonna go home and watch Speed now. You know what? I'm gonna go home and take Speed now. Oh, so she watches movies, so we can figure out what she does for a living. No. I'm an avid collector. I mean, Chris She's an avid so like collector. So, like, you. Chris is a little bit more something. Yeah, Chris, <laughs> Chris is another level. <laughs> um, Subtract what he told me. How many movies do you have? Mm, I'm approximately 1,400. What? Jeez. So you're, in, Chris, you're in the ballpark of Chris. Yeah. You're, you're, in, you're like AAA Chris. Have you the heard the leagues of Chris? Have you heard of the CLZ movie app? No. Okay, so it's an yeah, app. It's always movies with these people. I don't have. They get down the movie road, and then I have no right. idea what they're talking about. I do not I have that relate. many movies. Right, right, right. But I've also only been starting to accumulate them for the past like year. I've probably or so. seen like fifty movies in my life. So C well, CLZ movies, movies is an app where you can scan <laughs> the barcode. And it will cata it'll catalog it in your phone on the app, so you can have a like database of all of the movies that you have, as well as it's connected to IMDb, so you can look at the ratings and everything. Yeah, that's so really creepy. it's yeah. awesome. I love it. Mm, don't like that. No, she doesn't. Like so, so you work with robots and people. Robots and people. And a privately owned insane. business that has something to do with medical and gives people knowledge. And it's not with kids. And is it with old people? Actually, all ages. Okay. Uh, is it a rehabilitation clinic? No. Okay. Do you have a Facebook? No. Super creepy. The question is? No, Facebook. No, Facebook. Ew. <laughs> Because if you had a Facebook, we'd probably figure out this <laughs> pretty <laughs> goddamn quick. Just K E I S. You are so wrong. A. Is that how you spell it? No. K E. No. Is it Keisha with the C? No. My no. mother is illiterate. I I be I come before you. E except after C. K Y. Oh, good luck. No, that's Kesha, that's not Keisha. Yeah. Um, no, thanks. That's a, that's a white person. I thought for well, the longest time. Well. No, no, no. I thought that I thought that Kesha, you know who Kesha is, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. She I thought that she was a black lady for like the entire time I was listening to her. I had no idea she was white. And then I was at a party in college. And some girl was in the mirror, like doing her makeup and stuff. And she's like, "Don't I look like Kesha?" And I was like, "Isn't Kesha black?" And everyone just laughed at me. I'm like, "No, she's not black. She's white." And I felt really embarrassed. Uh, I don't. I don't know a lot of things about stuff. God damn it! We keep getting sidetracked. All right. So, 
And you got sidetracked there. <laughs> <laughs> real that one, that one was all of you. you. I did it to myself, but I'm back. All right, let's do this. You so, certain the frog's gay. <laughs> Goddamn demons. <laughs> Um, do you... You're a dental assistant. No, she, cause she works in an office. So yeah. She's not... Uh, Dentists have office. Dentist. That you're going to visit in an office. Uh, otherwise, that'd be a problem. Ryan, Ryan's into that low-budget <laughs> shit. I'm asking... Just some dude on the street corner kicks him in the jaw and realigns his teeth. <laughs> like, okay. Let's that might work. Play. So, okay. <laughs> we're playing Guess Who. We're playing Blue's Clues right now. Yeah. If. Trying to figure out what Keisha does for a living. What we can do some Blue's could do. We can too and jump into Is Alfred Hitchcock going down the stairs? Can we ask open ended <laughs> questions? Is that allowed? You can ask. Mm, shit. What do you do for a living? Oh my gosh. That is. Professor Keisha? When do you work tomorrow? Do you, All right, do you, dude, this is easy. Do you, do you teach people, or do you just work in a place that teaches people? Actually, education is part of my job. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. So you're like, you're an HR lady. No. Are you sure? Yeah. You a professor? I would not have the cool for that. HR people are very lame. Yeah, I hate them. They're awful. <laughs> Trying to help people. How dare they? <laughs> no, just what they're doing. It's, it's condescending. They're like, welcome to the team. You're a new team member. Well, you try like, listening to, my phone doesn't work for 12 hours. Who's <laughs> complaining about their phone to their HR manager? People who have phones and don't know how to use them. <laughs> it's not an AT&T employee. Uh, AT&T has human resources. Yeah, but human resources are people who hire employees. No one's, no one, like the HR oh, so you're lady, saying if a phone came in and tried to get a job at AT&T, the the last, you wouldn't hire it? That's discrimination. The last HR lady asshole. I dealt with was at yeah. IV. You're telling me people at IV are going to, their shit. going to their HR lady being like, my phone doesn't work. They'd be like, well, you're not supposed to have your phone at work. <laughs> Well, rotary phones have tenure, so you can't get rid of them. Weird. <laughs> You're so fucking weird when you're tired, dude. You're t- Normally, you're like the glue of the podcast. You keep everything together, and you, you bring us to a different pasture than we were in in the first place. And this in this podcast, you just go and straight Robert, just derailing the entire fucking conversation. Just every chance you get. I'm, I'm just trying to enjoy life, guys. <laughs> oh, I kind of get it. I kind of understand where Robert's coming from. Dude, over, he's, it's he is, you know what, man? If I could do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'd be just like Robert. Do what? <laughs> do a lot of math. Your marriage? Fry. What are you talking just about? Fry, fry my brain and just come to shows and be like, whatever the fuck he's doing. <laughs> Shit. The well, it's never you, you, weren't, you weren't there. He like totally went full WWE on a bag of chips. Yeah, like, yeah. Abby texted me about it. She what? texted me when I was upstairs. So she's he like, like yeah, yeah, and then he's, he I grabbed it, he put it in a chokehold. Because he couldn't get it open, and he just had it in a chokehold, and then he threw it on the ground, and he elbow slammed it, like the power elbow. elbow. And then he, like, popped up, and just started biting it, and Chris and I just kind of looked at him, and he was like, here, help me get it open! And it, it hadn't opened yet, oh, and Chris God. went to try to open it, and he, like, pulled it, like, long ways, and I was just like, here, and I went... <laughs> like that easily, just like, and then he just started eating. <laughs> it's just like, I'm getting sidetracked. Again. What the hell, Keisha? Are you an abortion doctor? Do you kill babies? 
to you. Professional damn it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a professional baby uh, killer. I'm an yeah. amateur baby killer. <laughs> I'm an aspiring baby killer. <laughs> Kill about four. I'm not. I'm not there. I'm not there yet. I only go on the weekends. Like I'm not consistent. I need to get. <laughs> okay. I'm going to like. What is the concern? Is it more a concern about saying where you work on? A live thing, or is it like you don't want us to know because you're she freaked out by us? She just enjoys being ambiguous. No, actually, that's very true. Or you don't have a job, and you're tricking us this entire time. That could be uh, it, also. Absolutely not. No, I don't think. I, I think you. Are you Bill Clinton? Never. Chelsea Clinton. That could be it too. She could be one of the globalist demons putting fluoride in the water. This mic smells like farts so bad. It's so gross. I don't know why I did that. Did you get shit particles over that mic? They're gone now. Alright, we're back. Um, <laughs> that's so, the power of OxyClean. <laughs> <laughs> he died from luggage. What? Did you not know that? Billy Mays was a heart attack. No, Billy Mays was on a plane flight and overhead luggage fell that out of the ceiling true. and hit him on the head. That is not and he was true. taken to a hospital and then he was fine and then he died in the hospital. I think from a heart attack. But that was why he was taken to the hospital. No. Shit. I thought he had cocaine in his system. Well, probably, but the look I just went to the Billy Mays here with a new fantastic product. Billy Mays here with another fantastic product. <laughs> do you hate it when do you hate it when your luggage doesn't fit in the overhead compartment? Well no <laughs> <laughs> Me too, I'm dead now. <laughs> End of commercial. <laughs> Even Oxyclean can't take out the blood stains <laughs> from that lady's gator skin bag. <laughs> I still had to pay the fifty dollars extra for a carry-on. <laughs> I couldn't check my luggage because it was over 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Mays here with a fantastic new product. <laughs> Do you hate blood stains on your. <laughs> Have you ever thought, hey, my coffin just isn't spacious enough? <laughs> here with the new coffin divider, <laughs> Billy Mays. Hi, uh, Billy Mays here. What another fantastic product. <laughs> Are you dead and in the afterlife and leave your wife all alone? <laughs> Here's my new dead husband. Does your halo just not have the shine that it used to have? <laughs> 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 oh, you're looking at Stacy's halo like, hey, that bitch has a better halo than mine. Well, here, here's the halo cleaner. <laughs> Wow, look at that sparkle! <laughs> I know, it's angelic. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just some lady that's being a No, Princess Diana. <laughs> <laughs> she got the shouty. Now that was a national tragedy, that's not funny to go about. <laughs> okay. fun. International tragedy. International yeah. tragedy. Nah, it was pretty centralized. <laughs> No, like all the middle-aged white reason. ladies cried. Yeah. <laughs> Princess Diana. Why? Like, why did everyone? Why did everyone? She was running away because she was cheating on <laughs> some dude. Why? Everyone was oh, like, "Hi, oh, Billy Mays here with a fantastic new product." I heard. Did you get caught cheating on your husband, the prince? <laughs> Try crashing into a bridge. <laughs> no, it's a tunnel. Can you not get those long distance shots of the carnage of Princess Diana? Well, here's a new lens for you. It's photoscopic. I heard what? about Princess Diana from my Wikipedia YouTube research at <laughs> Bill Burr. Uh, I heard that Which she that she was exactly <laughs> she was killed because she was outspoken about like anti-war. And she was outspoken about uh, other 
social issues and uh, the powers that be, the uh, Queen Elizabeth demands the Jews. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, the, no, no I, fine. The, the powers that be Jews decided that it was kind of time for her. To be, we have to take out. <laughs> It, it was time for her to be uh, not on Earth anymore, and they uh, <laughs> took her out. Uh, so they put her on the first shuttle to Mars, and off she went. Princess Diana, the queen of space. <laughs> uh, I, uh, whales. But <laughs> what about them? I don't know. They're big <laughs> They're great mammals. Naked. They're also a country. I like the cracker. <clears throat> is Wales a country or is it a region? It's a country. Is it really? Where? Yes. It's one of the five in Great Britain. <laughs> is it near Brussels? Is it the man or the, uh, the Isle of Man? You ever seen the Isle of Man? Yes. That's so interesting to me. I want to go there. <laughs> What's up, only men who live here? Because I'm assuming that's what the situation is. <laughs> Hey, Keisha, do you work for Georgia Pacific? No. She that answers your question, Chris. <laughs> Dude, where the fuck? He's been shooting it. He's been shooting. He's been shooting me texts. Shoot, no, shoot although, the shot. I do have an affinity for a lot of different types and weights of paper. Like I said. And men. Hey you. <laughs> your what? What's your favorite grain? What's your favorite <coughs> yeah, paper? Mm, that's, that's good. Okay. It's a nice paper. We'll, we'll leave the job thing alone and go on to something different. What in your mind would be, because you said what's your favorite grain, I thought you were going to go in a different direction. What would be your ideal uh, male counterpart if you had to describe him? Preferably living. Uh, yeah, don't, don't be fucking dead people. Yeah, cause... Uh, Billy Mays here. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Mays is my ideal male. Right. He had that beard and the way his neck fucking cracked when that... So if we, if we were to... Uh, not that we would ever do this, but if we were to set up a dating profile for you to try to find some nice men... I gotta be like... No, I'm scared. What... What, well, like, what are you, like, not gross or anything, but, like, what are you looking for? Like, what what type of guy? That's a probably random question, but, um... What about this entire experience has led you to believe that it wouldn't be a random question? <laughs> and that is so logical. I just, feel, I just feel like we've been beating the job thing into the ground. She's not going to tell us. Whatever. I give up. I don't care anymore. She probably is a cop or a whatever. Yeah. If we asked you like a relevant question, I would understand the confusion. <laughs> but she's not gonna. So we might as well go down this weird road yeah. of uh, let's try to set Keisha up with. Uh, Who are you looking for, what, Keisha? Uh, yeah. What are, you, what are you looking for? Who's Mr. Right? Wright? Tom Brady. Todd Basinger. Jimmy Garoppolo. Todd Basinger. <laughs> Billy Mays here. <laughs> I'll tell you about a fantastic new product. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Is there a... Uh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> is there, is there a, uh, like a celebrity comp? So maybe not, you're not, you're not you know... She you already said Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Is um, Keanu Reeves the celebrity comp? Sort of the racially ambiguous bro guy? He's not like that. Nah, he's not bro -y. It's like 12.15, I should go. But we're about to find we're out about who, to find who Keisha Fantasy is about. I, I'm not going that far. I just want to know, like, uh, generally descriptive uh, of the ideal man. Who... Okay, what's... What's a deal breaker for you? As yeah, far that, that's as, a like, good place to start. That's a better place to start than how vague I was being. Like, personality or habitual-wise, what's just the deal like, Yeah, just something you? that's like, that's too gross, I can't deal with it. Um, <laughs> well, because a couple of just came to mind right away. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Well, you got a Sam. Right, you know, like. Small penis and. No, I, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking of like necrophilia, pedophilia. Meh, absolutely not. No. Those are, those are pretty, that's a pretty low bar to be no, setting. No, not. As long as you're not a pedophile but and you don't fuck dead bodies. But like, I'll give it a shot. Who gives a shit? True. But it's a bar you should have. <laughs> Like, like you can't, you can't have a lot of care. You can't have a ladder without the bottom most rung. <laughs> no. Fair enough. Uh, relative, absolutely not. No. Um, okay, so not someone who fucks kids, not someone who fucks dead bodies, and not someone who is related to you. I think that's most people. <laughs> but we are narrowing it down. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely. Not inanimate objects? Absolutely not. Did you know that the Eiffel Tower was married? What? Yeah, to the Statue of Liberty. Oh, dude, have you ever seen the video? You're really bad for having No, but truly. I wish, I wish this was like a, a real podcast where we have like a screen behind us, like uh, Tom Segura's podcast. There's a video of a woman who marries a roller coaster. Have you ever seen that video? No, that would be quite an exciting. Oh right? my god, she is so fucking weird. She like will sit under the roller coaster and like in the rusty parts and the gross parts and, and feed like, it crepes. No, she'll like kiss it and like lick it and stuff. It's so nasty. Yeah. I'm on board. So yeah. gross. It's got her. Okay, so no necrophiliacs. No. Is so, uh, is is there? A, yeah. Tall, short, fat. Now I'm more interested in like what. Tall, short, fat. That's not your personality. That's what she does that annoys. What somebody does that would annoy her and make her just be like, mm, no. Well, you have to have some sort of parameters on right. height and weight. You can't date a one foot tall person. Yeah, you can. You um, could, but. Who's there, gonna stop me? There might be a one foot tall person. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on! Stop me! Say something! Kai, what time is it? It's like 12, 19, 12, 20. But what's a personality trait that you can't stand? Um, I would say it's a personality trait, but the belief system, um, the atheist, I, I couldn't. That's fair. Couldn't do that. Ah, darn! <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's actually. Do that yeah, I agree with that. Well, because that's not, like, a, a thing that you want to be a sore part of a relationship. So, like, rega it, regardless of anything, it's just, like, I don't want to have to have to me, this more, conversation with you. To me, it's more, about the, it's more about the kids. It's that, like, if yeah. You, if you have kids with someone, like, I'm not a huge believer person, and I know if I dated someone that was, that would be a big sticking point. Like, what do we teach the kids? And I can see it from the religious side, too. If someone was religious and they dated someone who was an atheist, it's like, you're going to want to teach the kids, like, you're going to want to put them through Catholic school and teach them everything, and then if, well, whatever, you know, you're going to want to teach them a certain way, and then the other one's going to be like, well, fuck that, I don't believe that, and it's just going to be, like, constant warfare. Well, yeah, and just an everyday thing. Not even with kids, just, like, the, the everyday interaction is just going to be, like, you could be like my mom and just go through the fucking motions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my, you know, she won't admit to it, and she's she's not watching. Nobody's watching. But there, there have been times where my dad is religious, and I've hung out with my mom, and you know, we have a few drinks or whatever. We start getting on the topic of religion, and she's like, "Well, you know, I just uh, I like she's not very, she's she's not very." Religious, but she pretends to be for my dad's sake, I think, which is which is true love. It's, That's a sweet sentiment, yeah. I don't think that she's necessarily like edgy atheist man or whatever, but she's no. like, no, I don't think she's too high. So you have to have somebody that's religious. Um, it's big old balls. Is that part of it? 
Yeah. Well, that goes without saying. That goes without posters, yeah. Oh, guys, that We're doesn't just, even have to be on the list. We're just getting into the real stuff, man. Just give us a quick description, just a quick rundown, a quick NFL uh, college draft description of your ideal... Don Rickles postmortem. Your ideal prospect. <laughs> You're like 6'5", good ball skills, lateral quickness, good good head for the game. Turf foot. Jim Rat. No, that's an injury. That's not, oh. that's not a... Never mind. No, absolutely, because I'm not going to a gym. Uh, <laughs> I... You should go swimming. It's, a li- it's great. I mean... Or a cab. Come on now, no. Um, I would definitely say employed because <laughs> we're just not. But why? <laughs> um, employed necrophiliacs out there. Get <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a shout. No. Um, so, other than being religious, well, not religious, but the faith is myself, um, definitely. Employed, I would say somebody who is not weak in their manhood. Like, I don't want you to be goddamn right. Guessing you do the, no, 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 no. There's one woman in this relationship. That's me. I need you to be <laughs> incredibly solid. Like, um, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Never mind. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. I don't need you to be in the mirror more than me, checking your hair, being glossy. No. Well, I'm out. This is not going to work. Um. <laughs> uh, I would definitely say somebody who actually challenges me. I could be, not one. always, but um, opinionated. Oh. No. So, if you choose the least, I'm not saying stubborn beyond any move, but someone definitely somebody yeah. who is challenging. I think intelligent. I just. So what kind of age range are you looking people. for? I can't. <laughs> no, it's good and to have somebody that calls you out on your bullshit. And there's all type of intelligence. I'm not saying you have to be a college graduate, PhD, whatever. But I mean, there's people who Don have. Don Singer. Have <laughs> never had a degree. GED. <laughs> now come on now. He has an Iowa Hawkeye shirt. Some of Are fry cooks at first I'm meet? not a fucking fry cook. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Do you make fries? <laughs> Got him! <laughs> funny. Absolutely funny. Because I do. So what kind of, what kind of age range are we looking at here? We're looking at like 25 to 45. Looking it's 25 and well I would be in jail, but no. 25. You're looking like 13 and up or yeah. Yeah. Do you like kill 25 like year olds? I'm confused. What? Like specifically? 25 is a bit young. Uh, but that doesn't put you in jail. I mean you're right, it doesn't. How old do you think I am? I'm not gonna That's... presume to know how old you are. I was going to ask you that, and then I was like, a better way of asking that would be, what kind of age range are you looking for? Mm, smooth. Exactly. Mm, smooth. I will say, uh, that's a bad an- uh, question to answer. I'm going to guess you are 21. No, I... 33? Oh my god, oh, Levi, you fucked up. That was your guess. I don't have a guess. Lies. <laughs> you you're do. 13 so years old. No, I would. I'll say you're 28. No? I was gonna say 31. I will be 31 this year. Mm. She's 30! Yeah. Closest! So I. I'm not 33, Levi, gosh. So you're. <laughs> you're <laughs> You're the same age as Todd, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe. Yeah. 
face it, Lydia. Yeah, I just want to go on a date. He said that. I'm down. I heard first that Maine has some good food. I'm not very manly. <laughs> yes. You might have to pay for the date with your bank account. He's not very smart either, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> he makes fries like a champ, though. Yeah, he does, man. He flips burgers and... Fries up those onion rings. He's great at it. That is funny. You're welcome. <laughs> I've never felt more embarrassed about my job than I do right now. Why? I'm just kidding. We know you're not a fry cook. No, you're a, you're a much sought after prospect. You're a bus boy. <laughs> no, I'm a dishwasher and a janitor. In, in Dubuque, which is... I scrape off people's plates and eat it because I can't afford it. In Dubuque, which has so many fucking restaurants, for some reason, I don't know why there's so many goddamn restaurants here. Dubuque and Galena. Have you seen the people that live in Dubuque? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Take a wild Dubuque. guess why there's <laughs> that many restaurants. Oh, yeah, they, they, they're guess trying why there's to... that many bars, too. <laughs> I, I yeah, think fair. it's a little oversaturated in terms of, like... But they're, they're like you gotta. It's supply and demand, man. They're, they're relying on like tourism, but I feel like there's not a whole lot of tourists who come to Dubuque. So well, for people from Dubuque, going two blocks is pretty much a tour. He's probably trying to get out of here. <laughs> All right, yeah, we gotta wrap this shit up. What I was trying to say is that Todd is a much sought after chef. Yeah, we gotta put that shit back up. What the hell was that? Well, Robert got a little bit drunk. No, Mike. He... <laughs> Michael and I were just watching him from behind. Just like he kind of like ripped the poster up the wall. Yeah. Why? But it's like a show that's still happening. Like it's not. Like it's coming up, and he just kind of like ripped the poster up. I have no idea what that was. <laughs> like, but this man is not comedy. I don't even know if that was his intention. I think he just found something and he got excited. I think he just got a little too drunk tonight. No, That's possible. I was thinking like this and it kind of hit my shoulder and he was like, oh. oh, so he's trying to, okay, that makes sense. Okay. He's trying to help you. He's always he trying to help us. He's a good guy. Yes. He's a beautiful man. That's oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Abby, <laughs> Abby said that He's like, Robert's kind of like the mascot of debut comedy. I was like, yeah, pretty much. Basically. On that note, uh, we're going to end this uh, very, very long edition of the Toddcast podcast. <laughs> Felt like we're here for fucking four hours. I'm going to fall asleep. <laughs> Levi's going to pass out. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks, Nobody. guys. Bye. 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 Well, you should edit everything from <laughs> <laughs> No, when Jake was here, the podcast was great. Yeah, and then he left, and then it kind of went off the rails a little bit.